Shalom, Kahala Yahawa, Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Kakadash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect, for the house of David will be born again in this generation, and Shalom to the one third of Yahshua, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. Now, today's lesson, we're going to basically cover the recent pagan holiday that was just celebrated in America and around the world uh, for the most part, right? That's known as Easter, or as it used to be known in its pagan roots, Ishtar, right? Now, before we uh, watch this video I have lined up, let's go ahead and read this. This is Matthews 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Right, and this is talk, and this is the Lord Himself talking about the people out there who, you know, profane to be, you know, believers in the truth. Right, uh, just like it it fell on the people back then who, you know, said that they were believers in the truth, the laws of the Lord. Right, it falls just on those people today too, equally. Right, who say that they're out there worshiping God and so-called Jesus and all stuff, and but they're out there, you know, doing Easter egg hunts and you know, uh, you know, doing all that the you know the Easter bunny rabbit stuff, all that stuff, man. But that has nothing to do with the Bible or the Messiah. Let's watch this. Before didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out to the bottomless pit and go into perdition. This shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seeds. God sees to the fruits of our labors. And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and His life humanly speaking, ended in failure. Matthew 15, verse 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I'm going to make this video as short as possible as I'm sure that especially in this weekend when it comes to the Easter bunny egg, you're going to see a lot of videos on this very same topic so I'm not going to deal with the large majority of what my other brothers and sisters are probably going to be dealing with but I simply just want to talk to you believer in Jesus Christ and this brief video hopefully is brief I don't know yet but I just want to have a simple chat with you because what is happening among the church is that a new brand of Christianity has arisen over the last five to ten years that has replaced the true church. It calls itself Christian. It may say the right things, it may do the, the, the right things at times, but what's happening far too often within the church is that we are mimicking the world way too much. I want to stop it right there because this guy uh, makes these videos, Shaking My Head Productions. So he's unfortunately just a straight up Christian as well, right? Um, he's he's also lost in the in the the whole religion outlook of the Bible, right? Because again, uh, for those who are unaware, the Bible has nothing to do with religion, right? The Bible simply is a book of laws. An ancient history and prophecies about a particular race of people, right? That being the Israelites, right? The Negro, Latinos, and Native Indians. And within our lineage, you had a, a special man, right? His name, 
the world ignorantly calls him Jesus Christ, but his true Hebrew name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, he was one out of our own uh, lineage, right? And and that whole Bible has to do all with us as a people, right? The Israelites, that is, right? It doesn't have to do with you going to church, kneeling, standing, uh, giving tithes to an organization of that, of, of that magnitude, right? It has to do with the laws and commandments that we as a people were given by our power, our God, the God of the Holy Bible, right? That's the truth of the matter, right? And it, it's sad news for everybody else, but it's the, it's the God honest biblical truth, right? That's what the Bible says. Now, just like this guy showed, man, you had, the Pope out there, you know, doing Easter Mass, right? And why is that? Well, you see, the Catholic, the Catholic religion, right? And again, just to clarify, all religion on earth is man-made, right? The Bible has nothing to do with religion, okay? Uh, now, the back to what I was saying, the, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, right? Which is the which is one of the the, the three frogs. That, that uh, or the false prophet as the Bible refers to it, right? Uh, it has created a, a system of doctrine, right? Which it calls, you know, Catholicism, right? Which basically is a, was a melding or an attempt to meld the ancient pagan roots of before with the, with the you know, Bible, right? Trying to meld those together. And what we have today from the Christian, from the Catholic, Christian, and all the denominations that come from from that, you know, house, um, those are all wicked, right? And they all have ties back to paganism, right? Because let's go and read this real quick. That tells us, you know, where does Easter truly come from, right? This is from his uh, historic mystery. He says the cultural melting pot of a pagan Easter. Easter is one of Christianity's highest and holiest days. The celebration and resurrection of Jesus, but the origins of today's very Christian holidays are firmly rooted in ancient traditions of pagan religions from many parts of the world. With its blend of solemn religious symbolism and fun of Easter eggs and bunny rabbits, Easter as we know it is a patchwork of beliefs and practices related to the themes of springtime, rebirth, and renewal. So, what does pagan mean? And more specifically, what involves a pagan Easter? And he goes on to say, uh, let's actually see. Uh, actually, here, let's read this part here. It says, where did the name Easter come from? Right? Easter most likely takes its name from the uh, from the names of goddesses associated with spring, vernal equinox and renewal. Estarte was the Saxon mother goddess, the source of all things and the bringer of new life around the same time. Teotonic tribes worshipped the dawn goddess Ostara, Ostara and also who also represented fertility and rebirth. Right, and this is and and that's pretty much it, people. Because when you get into it, you see this spring goddess, this goddess of heaven who renews life, is actually the mother goddess, right? Which when you trace its lineage back, right, through all of the different world religions from e e Egyptology, you know, to modern day Christianity, it all goes back to one specific woman who considered herself a god, right? It was a, it was the wife of Nimrod, the king of Babylon, right? He was a king, or they both were in rulership about 200 years after the flood of Noah, right? When the, the world, when they had managed to bring the, the nation, the 13 nations together and were rulers over them, right? They built built the Tower of Babel and, and, and so goes the story in, in Genesis 13. Well, what eventually happened is Nimrod was killed off. And Ishtar, as you see here in this picture, she was left in power, right? And what did she, she do? To, you know, did she step down and humbly go away? No, she concocted a, a story about her husband and the, her son, right? The son that she said that she had through an immaculate conception, right? Of a virgin birth, 
and because she was the woman who she was, everybody believed her, man. But this is simply was a lie that was told so that way she could keep power, right? And this is where we get the, the resurrection of, of, of Nimrod into Tammuz and, and all stuff. And this is why you have that virgin mother with a virgin immaculate conception, you know, myth that, you know, that goes on till today. This is the woman here, Ishtar, right? Samaramis, who the world ignorantly is worshiping today, or did worship today, right? Now, and this here, uh, let's go read how these devils have tricked the world into thinking that Easter is part of the Bible, right? You can find that in Acts 12 and 4. It says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Right? This is talking about, <clears throat> about this should have been uh, Passover, right? Because this is during the time. But let's go look at that word there, right? When we go to the Blue Letter Bible and we look up Acts, uh, that same scripture, right? Let's go down. Here it is. Easter, right? What is that word? Strong's G 3957. Pascha. Pascha. See, in Pascha. What is Pascha? Well, that's Passover, man. It says the, the Pascha sacrifice, which was a custom to be offered for the people's deliverance of the of old from Egypt, right? And what is that? That's the Passover, man. That has nothing to do with Easter, man. Right? Easter is the worshiping of of Ishtar, man. That's why it has such a, a, a direct, uh, you know, similar name to it, man. And also, you can see that the Bible actually talked about the worshiping of Ishtar, the, right, the Queen of Heaven, uh, before, man. This is uh, it mentioned in Jeremiah. 44 and 19. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings onto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings onto her with without our men? Right? And this is so this is ultimately what people were doing today, man. They were out there having Easter cakes and and, and all these things, you know, doing all these little uh, rituals, right? All these little traditions, which was taught to them by the churches, right? And what they were doing is basically burning incense and giving worship to the Queen of Heaven, right? That's who Ishtar is, right? That's that false deity that has tricked the, the, the masses of the world, man. And a lot of people are still within this, this, this false belief, right? But now is the time for you to start waking up, people, right? You know, if, if like, for example, today I didn't go out with my family. And they, they got together to go, you know, they said, you know, it's a, it's a get together. But they were basically spending the time together to do Easter, man. That's why they were doing Easter egg uh, hunts and shit. But I, you know, me and my, my, my lady, we decided not to, to go and partake in that anymore, man. Right? Because we went and did our own thing because we didn't want to, like the Bible says here, man. It says Exodus. 23 and 2 thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil neither shalt thou speak in a cause to, to decline after many to rest judgment right so you see so now is the time for you to start you know standing up and, and, and separating yourself from these worldly traditions man. because again the, the, the traditions of this world are all rooted in paganism, right? Even if the people who are worshiping it, celebrating it, think that it's all just for fun and games, right? They have no idea where it comes from. You know, their ignorance is is, is ultimately going to be uh, on you, man. Like their that's their ignorance is going to cause you to sin, right? So so what you should do, Akim, you know, is is, is understand that you know Easter is is doesn't have anything to do with the Bible, right? If, if you truly wanted to worship the, the true so-called Easter, it would have been the Passover, which just happened last week, right? That was that whole, you know, you get, you take uh, leaven out of your house, you know, you eat the lamb, uh, Passover dinner, 
and they perform the, the rituals described in the Bible, right? Those are the things that you should be doing, man. Not out there, you know, hunting for eggs, eating chocolate bunnies, you know, and, and you know, whatever other Easter, you know, rituals uh, they have going on, man. Right? And why is that? Because it tells you here what the true worshipers would be doing. It tells you, it says, John 4 and 23, but the hour cometh now, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Right? And that's the that's the truth about it, Akim, is that you know, if, if you're gonna be about this truth, if you really want to seek salvation, you want to seek exemption from, from judgment, right? You need to start following the Bible and following after the Lord as he had commanded. And what does that entail? Is by not following the traditions of this world, right? Because again, the traditions of this world are vain pagan rituals just repackaged to you in a in a false Christian, you know, shell. Okay, so I just wanted to get into this. Hakim, hopefully this video was edifying. Uh, but uh, next time, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Pachdash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.